Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys, I would actually like to tackle a few of your guys' company's recommendations and we're going to start off with the one that you guys see on your screen right now, Moderna. Now, I would like to cover today Moderna, which is brought up by Tobias Tonesson. We got Dell by Mr. Potato and Swen by Shiv. Now, Tony, I know that you asked for DPZ. However, DPZ actually has earnings on Thursday. So I figured let's just wait till like Thursday to do DPZ just so that way we get the earnings as well on that one. But for now, let's do Moderna, Dell, and Swen. So with that said, guys, let's get started with this analysis. And now coming over here to the earnings summary, they had earnings on the 3rd of November. So most likely they'll have earnings at around February. They haven't had it yet, but it is estimated to have it on the 23rd of February. Nonetheless, though, EPS normalized actual in November was $2.53, which was a mess by 58 cents. EPS gap actual, $2.53, missed by 66 cents. Revenue, $3.36 billion, which was a miss by $162.56 million. Jumping into the calculator, we got the ticker symbol for MRNA, market cap of $64 billion, a PE of 6.02, with a current share price of $166.60. Now, taking a look at the one year, guys, we are up 13.83%. Year to date, they're down almost 7%. 52 week range is $115.03 to $217.25. Now, obviously, I have to address the elephant in the room right now because, well, we all know what Moderna is famous for, right? They're famous for the vaccine, the COVID vaccine back in 2020. And unfortunately, a lot of their stock movement, as well as even fundamentals, are still kind of tied to that. However, I would just like to point out something, and that is if we take a look at the five year, if we come back to prior to 2020, guys, Moderna wasn't worth anything. Moderna was worth like, well, sorry, I'm not saying it wasn't worth anything. I'm saying it wasn't worth like $115.03 or even $217. It was worth like at around like 20 bucks or so. And then as soon as their vaccine came out, boom, massive skyrocket. And ever since then, they reached their peak, I believe it was at around august i believe yeah august 2021 and then after that guys they have come down and kind of stabilized at around like the 160 dollar mark 170 dollar mark nonetheless though understand that their fame essentially came from one thing right they came from one thing at one specific time and one specific event meaning that once this thing continues to die down which i'm not saying covid is going to go away i'm just saying that it's not as prominent as it was back in 2020 or even 2021 the more this happens the more hit in the revenue they're going to get based off of this specific kind of product so get ready to see some funky numbers and well we're also going to see something really really interesting when it comes to discounted free cash flow nonetheless they do not pay out the dividend which means all of their cash flow is going straight into themselves you can see that their cash flow is in the positive but at the same time it really isn't Let's jump into the fundamentals and see what in the world is happening. So we're going to start off with the net income. Five years ago, guys, of, uh, uh -huh, negative $384.7 million to one year ago of $11.765 billion. Guys, that is an increase of 3,158%. Yeah, uh, you guys could tell as to why this is going to be nearly impossible to do with this kind of castle, right? You had three consecutive years, negative, negative, negative. And then two years ago, <laughs> they went from negative 750, sorry, negative 747 to 12.2 billion in one year. That's, guys, that's insane, right? That is something that's like really, really uncertain. Uh, it just came out of nowhere. It's an outlier year. Even though they were able to replicate it as of 2022, you can see that they have gone down a little bit, going from 12.2 billion to 11.765 billion. So for that reason, guys, I'm giving this a 5%. Looking now at the free cash flow, we see something very, very similar. Now, unlike the other one where three years ago they were in the negatives, they are in the positive over here. However, that's still a massive jump. Five years ago of negative $436.7 million to one year ago of $6.2 billion increase of a little bit more than 1500% with an average of $4.1 billion. Now, remember when I said, you know, their castle's growing. Their, their, their castle's not growing. Their castle's just being 
buoyed up by this two year ago value where they went up to 13.3 billion dollars guys two years ago they were in the negatives and even from four to three years ago that's a massive jump negative 491 million to almost two billion dollars that's a massive massive jump and then from two billion to 13.3 massive jump again and then they came down from 13.3 to 6.2 this is all over the place. This is why I'm giving this another 5%. Again, 5% not zero because, you know, at least they were in the positive. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They were in the positive, so I'm gonna go at 5%. Looking now at the revenue, this is this is even this is this is the exact same thing. Five years, however, no negatives though. Five years ago of 100, I can't even put my mouse over it. Five years ago of 135 million dollars to one year ago of 21.4 billion dollars. Guys, that is an increase of 15,732.72%. Um, I mean, do I even need to say anything else? That is insane. Take a look at this. They went down from 5 to 4 years ago. They went from 135 to 60 million dollars. <laughs> five to four years ago then they shot up three years ago again three years ago guys was covid so they shot up to 300 um so they shot up to 803 million dollars and then from three to two years ago 803 million to 18 point by god 18.5 billion dollars guys that's not sustainable that's that's ridiculous now i just said that's not sustainable yet one year ago 2022 they brought it up again they brought it from 18.5 to 21.4 that's why i'm giving this a 10 percent but this is not a good looking graph this is just way too many outliers and we see the exact same thing once again in the assets minus liabilities now to be to give them credit they have been in the positive within the past five years that's really really good to see however that's a massive jump from three to two years ago so you know I don't know what else to say and even then from five to four years ago they did go down overall their average assets is 17.14 billion dollars average liabilities is 6.4 billion dollars and doing this difference we get 10.77 billion dollars guys the outliers are killing me i'm giving this a 10 percent looking at the cash flow minus the liabilities now this one's even this one's incredible too because you can see negative 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 okay actually going further down negative from five to three years ago uh, reaching their lowest point three years ago and then two years ago when you know after the we got after we started getting the reports from the COVID vaccine started to happen they literally did a net zero in this difference from three years ago to two years ago three years ago it was negative 2.8 billion dollars and then two years ago it was 2.8 billion dollars so they they went they went a net zero from three years ago to two years ago and then one year ago they went back down to negative negative 1.863 billion dollars average cash flow minus the average total liabilities it is negative 728 million dollars i'm giving this guys a 25 percent mainly because we have one year where they went positive that's it that's the only reason why i'm putting this as uh 25 overall this is just not good now looking at the shares outstanding this one caught me by surprise actually not really now i'm looking at this again not really they have been increasing shares on the five year however within the past few years they have been buying back a little bit five years ago of 328.8 million to one year ago of 387 million you can see that massive jump from four to three years ago going from 336 to 398 million shares however that's explainable because of the whole covid situation right and then two years ago they brought it back up again you could say the exact same thing but from two to one year ago you could see that they brought it back down from 403 to 387 million shares nonetheless though in the five year there's an increase of 17.7 percent and from the previous year to the current year almost a decrease of four percent i'm giving this guys a 50 percent mainly because well we know why they issued shares right we know why they issued shares so that's kind of explainable and on top of that, they are buying this back down a little bit today. So that's why I'm giving it a 50%. And lastly, looking at the cash and equivalents, they currently hold $3 billion with an average of $2.25 billion. And now looking at the overall grades, I mean, well, guys, yeah, I gave them really low grades overall. Net income, 5%. Free cash flow, 5%. Revenue, 10%. Assets minus liabilities, 10%. Cash flow minus liabilities, 25%. Shares of standing, up 50%. For an overall grade of 15%. I mean, we have been seeing this, right? We saw this even in the in the five-year graph. Guys, prior to 2020, they were worth like 20 bucks. Just because they made, you know, a vaccine that it was in such high demand, it was propped up by the government, all this crazy stuff, that's not a reason to justify this kind of valuation, at least in my personal opinion, right? The fact that the company has had such horrible fundamentals 
even in just in the profit metrics in just five years ago. That's really, really bad to see. And again, it does not justify a hundred plus dollars. And in fact, if we take a look at the discounted free cash flow, guys, these numbers are just absolutely crazy. And uh, it's not really surprising because of the massive outliers. This kind of free cash flow does not work when you have such drastic changes in those profit metrics. It just it does not work. And well, we can see that right here because uh, not inputting anything, guys. The share price should be worth adjusting for debt twenty two thousand dollars. No, this is this is not correct. Obviously, I'm telling you right right now that these numbers are like this because it doesn't work. This kind of free cash flow do does not work for these type of companies. However, we can use the book value per share and the tangible book value per share in order to come up with this kind of valuation. Now, this is, can be found on Seeking Alpha in the balance sheet. If you scroll all the way down where the shares are standing are, there is the book value per share kind of metric. And if we do this, we can see that, well, as of today, based on the book value per share, this is worth $46.49. This is up 650% though from the past five years of, take a look at that, negative $8.46. Yeah, I mean, we're even seeing this trend even in the book value per share. Now, looking at the tangible book value per share, it's the exact same value at $46.49. So that's pretty much, guys, what the stock price should be worth. And if we, of course, use the price divided by current book value and the price divided by current tangible book value, we get the same ratio of 3.58%. So yeah, guys, this, this company is very, very much overvalued as it currently stands. And because of those massive outliers, I discounted free cash flow, as I showed, it does not work. You're going to get massive, massive numbers that doesn't make any sense. And at the end of the day, I did give this company guys a 15%. Does this mean that you don't buy it? You guys do whatever you want, right? You guys do whatever you want. I personally, this company just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. I can't put my finger on it. I, it's a skip for me. It's a skip for me. If a company does not make sense to me when it comes to their numbers and the valuation, like if there's such massive difference, it's a skip. Automatic skip and we move on to the next one. So just because I do that doesn't mean that you guys do that. Have all of these calculators for free, guys. It's kind of for gas flow, even though in this case it doesn't work. Book value, revaluation, and dividend tracking sheet. All we're asking for in return, guys, is just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. Thank you so much for everybody who have subscribed. I really do appreciate it. Now, I'm going to do two other companies, and I'm not going to say that. I'm probably going to say that at the very end. Nonetheless, though, let's take a look now at the second company, which is, and that is the company Dell Technologies, which was brought up by none other than Mr. Potato. So this is a company that I have done before in the past, and, uh, well... Yeah, it's, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna tell you right now that, from what I remember, their fundamentals are just not good. Like, really not good. And, uh, let's dive into this company and see if maybe things have changed, but honestly, I highly doubt it. Taking a look at the quick earnings summary, guys, they had earnings on the 21st of November. EPS normalized actual came in at $2.30, beat by $0.69, cents. EPS gap actual $0.33, cents, missed by $0.57, cents. revenue $24.72 billion, which was a beat by $111.23 million. Jumping into the calculator now, we got the ticker symbol for Dell, a market cap of $30.4 billion and a PE of zero. This is actually incorrect. I'm so sorry, but for some reason, man, Google Finance is just not working. And let me change this to another company and then bring it back to Dell to see if that fixes it. And there we go. Yeah, PE trailing 12 months, it is 17.82. And this has a current share price of $42.48. Looking at this in the one year, they're down 28.32%. Year to date, they're up almost 4%. 52 week range is $32.90 to $59.03. Not 52 week lows, but it is in kind of like leaning towards the 52 week lows. And I'm so terribly sorry, guys, but they also do pay out a dividend of $1.32. Sorry, I did not put that there. This becomes, this is a yield of 3.11%, pretty big, honestly. Payout ratio of 13.13%, no five-year CAGR, which uh, that's not good. And uh, zero consecutive years of dividend growth. Now, let's take a look at that for a second because that could be a little bit of an issue. Well, we take a look at this. Actually, no, it's just that we actually, well, actually on the max maybe? No, it's just that they just started issuing a dividend April 18th, 2022. So this is not a case that, oh, you know, they cut all that stuff. It's just that they just do not have enough data for it. Okay, so take it with a grain of salt, obviously. They do not have the data, so odds that they might cut it in the future are 
somewhat high, right? Since they don't have uh, historical data for actually continuously giving it out. Again, just take it with a grain of salt because they do not have data of consistently issuing that dividend. So please be very, very careful. Ex dividend date passed as of January 24th. Payout date was on the 3rd of February and they pay their dividends quarterly. Based off the current shares outstanding, they pay out $947.76 million in this dividend, which based off of their five-year average free cash flow, it is $5.1 billion after this is paid. However, as of their last year's free cash flow, they're only left with $12.24 million. That is a massive decrease, guys. By that, you can just tell that their last year's free cash flow collapsed. So we're going to see that in the fundamentals. But these payout ratios come out to be 98.73% for the last year's free cash flow and 15.79% for the five-year average. Again, that's a major, major discrepancy, right? It's not consistent. 98%, they're almost taking on debt based off of their last year's free cash flow. And now coming into the actual fundamentals. Starting with the net income, five years ago, they were at negative $2.3 billion. And as of one year ago, they were at $1.83 billion. Guys, this one year ago, it is 2022. So just keep that in mind. Now, the problem with this is that even though this is an increase of 179%, guys, you can see that, well, it's not consistently increasing for starters. They were negative, but that negative was five years ago. But you can see it was up, down, up, down, up, down. That's not consistent. I do not like that. So for that reason, I'm giving this a 5%. Looking at the free cash flow. We kind of got a glimpse of this when we saw the payout ratios, but... um. It's, 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 just, it's just not good. Five years ago of $5.5 billion to one year ago of $960 million. They went from $5.5 billion to less than a billion dollars in five years. That's a red flag. This is a decrease of 83% with an average of $6 billion. You can see a pretty good consistent increase from five to four to three years ago. Three years ago, obviously being COVID. So people were at home. People were probably buying laptops. Not surprising that they were their highest at this point and 9.3 billion dollars but then after that they came down to 7.5 and then 960. this is a perfect example as to why you can't just be like oh okay it, it's going up therefore like for example if you were to just block these two and one year ago let's just say that we're still in uh, 2020 oh my god dell is just going to go make 10 billion dollars and then 11 billion the following year it's just gonna keep going up all because of this one time one time that people were locked in at home they couldn't do anything they're probably buying a bunch of stuff they had excess money right because of the stimulus checks you can't just say oh, okay they're going to continue this into the future because of this one thing no it's most likely not going to happen it is an outlier year and this is a perfect example because they went down the year the year afterwards and then really went down the year after that again Please be very, very careful when you see these outlier years when it comes to pretty much any company, right? Don't assume that they'll be able to continue it year over year over year in the next four, five, ten years because most likely it was a one-time event and they will not be able to do it. For this reason, guys, I'm giving this a 5%. Looking now at the revenue, though, this one's actually very, very interesting. Five years ago, they were at $90.6 billion to one year ago of $105.25 billion, increase of 16.15%. Now, we see here that from five to four years ago, they went down slightly, but pretty much from four to three to two to one year ago, consistently increasing, honestly, and no massive jumps. I mean, I guess you could say three to two years ago was a pretty big jump, but it really wasn't that bad. Now I have this at 10%. I'm actually going to change my mind on this. I'm, I'm going to give this at around like a 45%, mainly because, you know, you do see a pretty consistent increase from five to three to two to one year ago. And only five years ago was like the one time where it went down from five to four. So I'm going to go with 45%. Assets minus liabilities. Now this one is is just horrendous absolutely horrendous you can see that well they've had multiple years even before this massive collapse two years ago into the negatives they were still in the negatives guys five years ago of negative 942 million dollars and three years ago during covid what happened boom massive massive jump going from 3.15 billion dollars four years ago to 7.55 billion dollars the following year and then what happened after that well two years ago in the negatives, negative $1.58 billion. And then one year ago, again, negative $3.36 billion, guys. And as of today, they're in the negatives to negative $3.368 billion. Guys, really, really awful. Now, average total assets, it is $101.1 billion. Average liabilities is getting really tight to that. Really, really close to that. $100.6 billion. Doing this difference, we get 
478 million dollars so it doesn't even get to half a million dollars guys i'm giving this a zero percent this is not looking good you had two years of positive and then just boom collapse i do not like that one bit zero percent looking now at the cash flow minus the liabilities this one's actually looking not too bad now the lowest point was four years ago and as you can see they have slightly been increasing it ever since now i have this as a 25 percent for a grade however i'm actually going to bring this up a little bit maybe to like a 45% I would say and mainly because of the fact that we're seeing just these small increases but it's very very weary still I do not have enough data to tell me that this is going to be consistent enough average cash flow minus average total liabilities it is negative 99.436 billion dollars looking now at the shares outstanding this one is uh it's it's good, but it's not good. We got five years ago of 719 million shares to today of 718 million shares. There's only a decrease in the five year of 0.14% from the previous year to the current year as another decrease of 5.15%. You can see that from five to pretty much two years ago, they were issuing shares. But as of one year ago, they bought back going from 757 million to 718 million. So for this reason, guys, I'm going to give this like a 50%. There really wasn't much of an increase, I guess you could say, from five to like two years ago. Well, actually, there was. Don't get me wrong. There was. But, you know, there were the rate of which kind of got put back from this buyback that we just saw right here in one year ago. So that's why I'm giving it a 50%. And lastly, when it comes to the cash equivalents, they currently hold almost $5 billion with an average of $9.5 billion. Looking at the overall grades now, we gave the, the net income of 5%, free cash of 5%, revenue 5, 45%, assets minus liabilities 0%, cash flow minus liabilities 45%, terms of standing at 50% for an overall grade of 23%. Guys, they have problems when it comes to their profit metrics and their assets and liabilities. So that's why I'm giving this a 23%. So now let's come into the discounted free cash flow to see if the current share price, this is looking like a buy, $42.48. Well, not inputting anything, guys. We see that not adjusting for debt, it is around $22.65. And then adjusting for debt, this comes down into the negatives because they have a lot more debt than they do cash on hand. I mean, we're seeing that with the liabilities going into the red, like the assets minus the liabilities going into the negatives. Massive, massive, massive amount of liabilities that they have on hand. Not surprising that this is the case, but let's actually change these numbers up a bit, make revenue growth assumptions. Let's come over here to Seeking Alpha. We can see that the forward guys, take a look at this. The forward is estimated at negative one. I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that they'll do negative one. I think at best, at best, I'm going to go with like at around one, two, and three percent. And then for the projected share buyback, we saw in one year they bought back five percent of shares. I don't think that this will be the case either. And I'm pretty much just going to put the same numbers for the projected share buyback at one, two, and three percent. And with that, guys, with a required rate of return, we get the target share price that's not adjusting for debt of $23.71 to $25.96. Adjusting for debt, this goes into the negatives. We can pretty much ignore this. Is again, it's just it's just because they have too much debt. They have so much more debt that it pretty much just destroys all of the market cap that the calculator is pretty much coming up with. So that's the reason why this is in the negatives. Even with this though, we can see that you know twenty three dollars to twenty six dollars essentially, guys. The current share price is forty two dollars and forty eight cents. This is this is just very very expensive. And on top of that, remember what I gave the grade twenty three percent. In a combination of just the fact that the share price isn't there, right, and the fundamentals just aren't there either, I to me this is this is not a buy right now. It really, really isn't. But of course, just like I said with the Moderna one, you guys can make this decision for yourselves. All of these calculators are for free. And now coming into this dividend, if we make a an initial investment of $5,725 at the current annual dividends per share, we get $178 or almost $178 in annual dividends, which it's not bad. However, remember, they do not have consistency, or at least, sorry, they do not have enough historical data for consistent dividend increases. So just be very, very weary with that. And on top of that, remember, their free cash flow is also coming down. So this dividend might get cut because remember, companies use the cash flow to pay out a dividend. All in all, when it comes to Dell, you know, you would think that this company would be a whole lot better. Actually, it really, really isn't. Like, I, I hate to say it, but this is really, really isn't. So terribly sorry, Mr. Potato, but nonetheless, this is just my personal opinion on this. With that said, let's move over now into the third company. And now for the third company, guys, we got 
clear way. Now, this one was brought up by Shiv. I don't know if you are still watching this, but nonetheless, let's take a look at this company to see what we can actually learn. Coming into the earnings summary, they did have earnings on the 2nd of November. EPS normalized actual, we don't have any info. EPS gap actual came in at 28 cents which was a beat by 10 cents revenue 340 million dollars which was a miss by 36.28 million dollars now since this is a utilities company we cannot use this kind of free cash flow so instead we'll use book value and tangible book value to see if at 32 dollars you guys can see right here this is looking like a buy so we got the ticker symbol for cwen market cap of 6.5 billion dollars a p of 6.2 with a current share price of 32 dollars and 77 cents on the one year, they're down 1.87%. On the year to date, they're up 2.23%. 52 week range is $29.61 to $41.79. Not 52 week lows, but still getting very, very close to that. Now, they do pay out a dividend of $1.50, which is a yield of more than 4.5%. Payout ratio of 29.06, five year CAGR of 5.4, with three consecutive years of dividend payment. X dividend day is actually coming up on the last day of February, February 28th. Payout day is on March 15th and they pay their dividends quarterly. And of course, based off of the current shares outstanding, they pay out $175.2 million in dividends every single year. And now jumping into their fundamentals, starting of course with the net income, we got five years ago of negative $16 million to today, guys, of $562 million. Guys, that is, oh my God, that is an increase of 3,612.5%. Dear Lord, yeah, um, this is just really, really just uncertain, right? You had two years of negative net income and sure they were positive, you know, four, two and one year ago, but one year ago, guys, it was just a massive jump. Again, uncertainty, therefore I'm giving this a 5%. Looking now at the total revenue, this one actually isn't looking too bad. Five years ago of $1 billion to today of $1.24 billion, increase of 23%. And we can see that three years ago is when they came down a little bit, but you can pretty much attribute that to pretty much just COVID, right? And ever since then they have been going up, but they did come down from one year ago to today. Nonetheless though, I'm giving this, actually I gave this a 60%. I'm gonna give this a little bit higher. I'm gonna go with like a 70% just, just because it's only two times where they went down slightly. And again, it was slightly. So I'm gonna go with a 70% on that one. Looking now at the shares outstanding, this one unfortunately is looking really, really bad guys. You can see consistent increase of shares every single time. And two to one year ago, they kept it the same, but then they increased it from one year ago to today by around a little bit more than half of a percent. Nonetheless though, on the five year, this is an increase of 17.62%, going from 99.3 million shares to 116.8 million shares. I'm giving this a 0%. Looking now at the assets minus liabilities, this was looking really, really good. Consistently increasing year over year, not a single time that they go negative. Guys, that's, I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. This graph looks really, really great. Average total assets, it is $10.45 billion. Average liabilities is $7.65 billion and doing this difference, we get almost $2.8 billion. I have to give this a 100%. And now when it comes to the overall grades, unfortunately, this isn't looking too good. We give them the income of 5%, revenue 70%, social standing of 0%, consistently increasing, and assets minus liabilities of 100%, overall grade of 38%. Main problems here, guys, is the net income and the shares outstanding. The net income is mainly just because it was such a, it's just a spike. It just spiked out of nowhere. And the shares outstanding is just consistently increasing, right? You don't want to see that. So for that reason, I give this a 38%. And now taking a look at the book value per share and the tangible book value per share, this is going to tell us what the company's value should be worth based on an assets minus liabilities divided by the shares outstanding perspective. And as of today, guys, they should be worth $19.62. This is up 12% from the prior past five years of $17.59. Now doing the same math with the tangible book value per share, this is removing anything that is non-tangible well this becomes a negative number i think that this isn't that accurate mainly because this is a utility company that might be the reason why right but nonetheless 
currently it is at negative two dollars and 77 cents and in my personal opinion when it comes to the tangible book value i think we can pretty much ignore it when it comes to this one so looking at only the current book value per share and the price divided by the current tangible book value ratio we get a ratio of 1.67 meaning that unfortunately this is a little bit expensive based off of the book value perspective you want this number guys to be as close as 1.00 because that is at value under that it is undervalued and above that is overvalued now just because it's overvalued doesn't mean that you don't buy it obviously you have to take into account well if a company is growing at a certain rate in into the future you might be willing to pay a premium how much of a premium that's really up to you though and in regards to this well 0.67 might be a little bit expensive maybe if it was like around like 0.1 maybe 0.15 i'd be like okay that's not too bad but the fundamentals just aren't there for me so yeah to me this is just a pass as it currently stands and of course if we were to put in five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars in dividends this would net you guys two hundred and sixty two dollars and seven cents that's actually really really good however a company is worth more than just a dividend even though this is a utility company utility companies are very very safe normally nonetheless though it's it's not just solely for a dividend that you want to invest in you want to invest for other things and unfortunately this one just isn't there for me but then again the dividend is still looking really really good all in all when it comes to clearway i you know they have problems with their fundamentals especially the net income and the shares outstanding aside from that you know they don't have that much debt from what it's looking like at least on the assets minus liabilities part and well the book value is is looking a bit expensive but it's like you know it really is up to you it, it really is up to you for me the, just those fundamentals alone just the net income and the shares of standing kind of kill it for me but then again you guys make your own decision for yourselves that's why again all of these calculators are available for free please have them make your own decisions because this is not financial advice and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow that pretty much does it for this video everybody liked if you like comment subscribe it really does help with the algorithm on youtube you guys can follow us on the new tech sites link in the description below so with that said peace out and we'll see you all in the next stock analysis of video